Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review the GEPRC Stable All-in-One Stack. In this video, I'm going to go through its features and soon I'm also going to feature it on a build video when I'm going to build the X-Fighter frame from Tomoquats. The GEPRC Stable is available in two versions. You can either get it with a 12 or 20 ampere 4-in-1 ESC controller. Both versions come with an Omnibus F4 flight controller and they have the same VTX. So let's open this box and see what we get inside. Inside we get in the VTX, the 4-in-1 ESC controller and the Omnibus F4 flight controller. In addition, on the bottom we can find spacers, screws and also a 330 microfarad capacitor, the hex screws for the stack, all the wires that are needed and we also get in a linear antenna with an IPX connector. A user manual is not included, but it's available online. You can just scan this barcode. And I'm also going to put a link in the description down below so you can check it out. You can see that the packaging is pretty nice. It is actually nicer than the packaging of the XJB F428. Of course, packaging is not everything, but still it's a nice thing to have. So let's start by taking a look at the components, starting at the ESC controller. This is the 20 ampere 4-in-1 ESC controller. It supports BLLES and D-Shot 600. Both 12 ampere and 20 ampere versions support between 2 to 4 S LiPo batteries. The 12 ampere version can support a maximum current peak of 15 amperes for 5 seconds and the 20 ampere one can support up to 30 ampere for 5 seconds. Both motors and battery leads have pads on the top and on the bottom so you can choose how to solder the motor wires and the battery leads. And as you can see, it has almost the same dimensions of the 4-in-1 ESC board of the XJB F428. So you can see it's just a little bit smaller. And in terms of weight, it weighs 5.60 grams, whereas the 4-in-1 ESC controller of the F428 weighs 4.66 grams. So it is slightly heavier. The board comes with this plastic cover on top, so in order to connect it to the flight controller, you will need to remove it and then, of course, remove the plastic cover from the flight controller as well, connect them together, and of course, you need also to put the spacers in the middle. Moving on to the Omnibus flight controller. On the top right, we can find the VTX connector. Then the front connector is for the camera, the right pin is the audio, then the video, the ground, and the plus 5 volts. On the left, we can find the micro USB port, then the boot button, which comes in this format, which I'm not really a big fan of because I had a few times that it just fell off the board. So be careful while pressing it and actually try to avoid pressing it if you can. Over here, we can find the connector for the receiver. The right pin is the ground, then the 5 volts, the RC in, and the left one is the 3.3 volts out. We get in these wires that will allow us to just connect it to the ports and then you can just wire it the way you want. Over here we have these three pads, which I haven't found any explanation to what they are. If you have any idea, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll do some research and if I'll find out, I will also let you know in the description box. The RC in supports DSMX, PPM and SBUS, so just use the appropriate connector, either the 3.3 or the 5 volts and you're gonna be good to go. Finally on the bottom, we can find the buzzer and LED connector. The right pin is the ground, then the buzzer minus, the LED strip minus and the plus 5 volts for the buzzer. Finally, this is the VTX. It supports 48 channels and has a selectable output strength of 25, 100 and 200 milliwatts. Configuring the VTX is done using either this button or the other one which is on the side. It's pretty interesting that they chose to include two buttons that serve the same purpose, but it's pretty cool because it adds some redundancy and if one of the buttons is going to be ripped off, you still have the other one. Configuring the VTX is done only through these buttons, it doesn't support smart audio and you won't be able to control it through your Betaflight OSD. The antenna connector is an IPX connector and if you choose to use this VTX independently, it supports between 2 to 6S LiPo batteries. It's going to be connected to the VTX through this connector over here, so you just need to connect it like that, make sure you don't bend any pins and if you want to connect it Independently, you have these pads over here. The left one is the audio, then the video, plus five volts, ground, battery, and ground. Monitoring the selected channel, band, and output power strength is done through these LED indicators over here. If you're going to press this button for about three seconds, you're going to set the channel. It's the blue indicator on top. Then you can just short press this button in order to switch between one up to eight channels and it's going to be noted by the number of time this LED indicator is going to flash. 
if you're going to press this button for another three seconds, you're going to move on to the band selection. It's going to flash once for A, twice for B, and so on until F, when it's going to flash six times. And finally, if you long press this button again for three seconds, you're going to move to the power selection mode, which is indicated by the red LED indicator. If it flashes once, it means you are on 25 millivolts, twice for 100 millivolts, and three times for 200 millivolts. Then long press this button for another three seconds and your selection is going to be saved. I'm gonna show you how to set it up again when I'm going to use it on my build video. Now let's weigh all the three parts together. So this tech without the spacers and mountain screws weighs 12.13 grams. So it's a little bit heavier than the XJB F428 tech that weighs 10.75 grams. Now if we compare them side by side, the EC controller is 28 amperes, whereas the Gaper C features a 20 amperes one. Both flight controllers are Omnibus F4 flight controller. And finally, the VTX of the Gaper C has a maximum output strength of 200 milliwatts, whereas the newer version of the XJB F428 has a maximum output strength of 350 milliwatts. And it has also this digit indicator, which is more comfortable to use than these three LED indicators of the Gaper C stable. In terms of pricing, they cost almost the same. The Gaper C stable costs about $75, whereas the XJB F428 cost $80, so $5 is not a big difference. And one more thing they have in common that both supports between 2 to 4S LiPo batteries. If you need 5S battery support, check the XJB F440, which has a 40 ampere 4-in-1 EC controller and can support between 3 to 5S LiPo batteries. In order to test this flight controller fully, I will have to take it outdoors and test it out. So stay tuned because soon I'm going to feature it in a build video and then you're going to see for yourself the performance of the VTX because even though the output strength is lower, it doesn't mean that the performance is not as good and it can even surpass the performance of the TX20 VTX of the XJB F428. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about these all-in-one stacks, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.